So I said I would talk about some, I won't talk about all of them, but in my book I have nine important perennial narratives. Uh, panic versus confidence, frugality versus conspicuous consumption, the gold standard versus bimetallism, labor-saving machines replacing jobs, automation and artificial intelligence replacing almost all jobs, uh, real estate booms and busts, stock market bubbles, boycotts, profiteers, and evil business, and the wage price spiral. So I, how am I doing on time? I another five. I'll do another. Okay, I, I won't maybe get through all these really well, but uh, panic versus confidence. You've heard of a banking panic? A run on a bank? That's when a rumor starts. By the way, rumor, R-U-M-O-R, -R, is the ancient Latin word for a narrative epidemic. <laughs> they knew about this and worried about it too. Uh, but this is, uh, a bank panic occurs when someone says, I think the banking system is failing. You better rush right down to the bank and get your money out now or you'll, it will be too late. And so that becomes a contagious story. And even if the banks are perfectly sound, they'll fail when that story develops. It's a narrative-based event. So nobody seemed to be talking about banking uh, uh, panics until around 1850. And then the, the narrative started to spread. So this is a, a constellation of epidemics. You can see that mentions of all the famous panics, 1837, 1857, were growing together. It wasn't that they were responding to the latest one. They, they were reminded of the earlier ones, and they were very much talked about uh, half a century or more later. That's a, a constellation of or co epidemics. A, a business confidence is another, uh, uh, it's related. The term business confidence uh, evolved into uh, consumer confidence eventually. Uh, they didn't talk about consumer confidence uh, until uh, in the 20th century. Why not? I'm trying to understand why. I think they probably just didn't think about marketing and retail and. Uh, they didn't think that every, everyone spends all their money, don't they? Uh, they, didn't, they didn't get it yet. But now it's big. Uh, the Great Depression itself is a narrative. Uh, this is counts in both newspapers and books of Great Depression. The interesting thing is, hardly anyone talked about the Great Depression during the Great Depression. <laughs> there, there were. It's there. That, that's the Great Depression after 1929. But the story just continued to grow. We weren't forgetting the story. We were getting more and more into it until 2007. And then it went up like fivefold all at once. That's called the Great Recession. And it's named after the Great Depression aptly because people thought it was the Great Depression again. And they thought this 1929 crash is happening right now again with the stock market. And that, of course, is a self fulfilling prophecy. So the narrative seems to largely drive the whole event. Um, frugality versus conspicuous consumption. Uh, frugality narratives are narratives about modest people, nice people. Okay, uh, In ancient times, they didn't like show-off people. So in ancient China and uh, Greece and Rome, they had sumptuary laws against showing off. Uh, but there's another narrative which says that you have to, uh, 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 you have to show off to be a success. Uh, in his book, uh, How to Get Rich by Donald Trump, he tells, you, <laughs> he tells you, you know, you've been mistakenly thinking it's a good idea to be modest. But I'm, I'm not quoting him word for word, but he says approximately this. You better tell people about your successes. Because then they'll, they'll hear of them. Nobody else is going to do it. You do it for yourself and understand that it's OK to be boastful. That, that is a different narrative. So uh, uh, the, the show off narrative was big in the 1920s. And in 1929, after the stock market crash, they got rid of all their frustrations about those obnoxious people who boast all the time and talk about me as a loser. Uh, so here's a quote from Winifred Holtby, who was a, com a columnist for the Manchester Guardian in 1931. Uh, Dare to be poor. In other words, can we not use this period, that means the Great Depression, to get rid of a little snobbery and bunkum and leave, live lives dictated by our own tastes instead of our neighbor's supposed notions of what is done? With so much to do and a world so rich in experience, 
Must we shut ourselves up into little genteel compartments in which we all adopt the same arbitrary standards, wear the same things, eat the same things, and produce the same sad monotony of appearances? So I think it's pretty established that people were much nicer in the, <laughs> in the Great Depression. Uh, so, uh, oh, I found uh, examples of uh, the, the, f the other narrative is the one that Donald Trump espouses, which is that uh, you better show off. Uh, I found it uh, a nice story of it uh, in a book uh, by Lucian of Samosata, written in the second century. That's over here, uh, uh, and Lucian. Uh, he, this is he's a cynic. That, that's an ancient word too. A cynic is someone who makes fun of excesses. And so he's not writing what he thinks, he's writing what uh, is an extreme value of what is said. Uh, and so he says, uh, drink, drink, drink deep, live high, and uh, keep mistresses. That's an important thing you had to do in ancient uh, Greece, keep mistresses, <laughs> because it marks you as a successful narrative. And I'm quoting, this is actually from uh, How to Get Rich. Uh, think big. If you're going to live, live large. I think this is part of the reason why the U.S. economy is among the more successful around the world today. Although people are upset and agitated by the impeachment hearings and these things, it's an upsetting time. It's also a time of freedom to live large, uh, and we have the authority of the U.S. president. He's well-meaning here, I think. He honestly believes it. It, it has uh, shown to be successful for, for him. Uh, so. Um, Involuntary unemployment is the idea that those unemployed people are there for no fault of their own. Uh, they didn't really talk much about it until the 20th century. The idea was that there's something wrong with these people who were laid off. But in the Great Depression, it, uh, attention really uh, grew, uh, and involuntary unemployment created a more sympathetic culture. Uh, the other, uh, yeah, here's, here's an uh, involuntary unemployment. And it peaked in the Great Depression. Uh, I'm almost done here. Uh, the, uh, the American Dream was coined by James Truslow Adams in 1931. Uh, it, the American Dream is the philosophy that he thought was distinctively American, that it's OK to be rich. We admire rich, not aristocrats or kings or queens. It's people who uh, showed their abilities by acquiring great wealth. Uh, and, uh, and they, can, they ought to show it off, because that's an inspiration for other people to succeed like that, too. Uh, that's the American dream. And it, it's still growing. This epidemic has grown and grown and grown uh, since he, poor Mr. Adams never saw how far his narrative <laughs> went uh, of a, the American dream. Monetary standard, I've already talked. Why was bimetallism so successful? Part of it was that uh, uh, it appealed to young people who thought they were smarter than those pretentious Wall Street types. Uh, and this is a picture from a book by um, a book called Coins Financial School, which is like a comic book. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, that's Coin. He looks like Greta Thunberg. Uh, I mean, in terms of his age, he is kind of the fictional Greta Thunberg of that other movement, uh, lecturing to pretentious uh, Wall Street types and showing about bimetallism, and they're all opposed to it. Those guys were so obnoxious calling us stupid for this idea, uh, and he outsmarts them. They just love that. They ate, this book sold a million copies. You own a copy, by the way. When you ever feel in the mood, just take your mobile phone out and search for Coins Financial School, and you can pull it up. Uh, it's fun, uh, and it uh, helped explain the epidemic. Well, I'll st this is my last one, technological unemployment. That's the old word uh, popular in the Great Depression for why we have such high unemployment. The unemployment rate got up to 25% in uh, 1932. And uh, why did it get so high? That's one in four was unemployed. Uh, people thought it was because machines were replacing jobs and the, the robots were taking over. Yes, they said that. Robots are taking over. What's an example of a 1932 robot? The dial telephone. Old telephones didn't have a dial or a keypad. You had to pick up the receiver, and then a lady's voice, would, always a lady, would come on and say, number please, and you would give the phone number, 
and she would connect you on a switchboard, hand connected. They invented this new dial telephone, which you didn't have to talk to anybody. That's a robot. And people were upset about the robots taking our jobs away. Uh, you can see that, uh, the, and they talked about technological unemployment. That coincides exactly with the Great Depression. So you might question whether I'm right that people really thought. I think that they thought that they were going to lose their job to a robot before long. And they didn't want to spend money. They wanted to save money. So it pulled the whole economy back. And if you don't think that people really believe that, I'll give you an example of someone who de definitely did. That is Albert Einstein. And then in uh, 1933, he was interviewed by the Boston Globe newspaper. And he said this. According to my conviction, it cannot be doubted that the severe economic depression is to be traced back for the most part to internal economic causes, the improvement in the apparatus of production through technical innovation and organization has decreased the need for human labor and therefore caused the elimination of a part of labor from the economic circuit and thereby caused a progressive decrease in the purchasing power of the consumers. That's Einstein. You don't often say that Einstein is wrong, right? <laughs> because he's the most revered figure. I'm using it as evidence that a lot of smart people thought that the Great Depression was caused by robots taking over, although there were other ideas as well, trade war or confidence. Thank <laughs> you.